Hey, welcome back to all of our kids in Bowie and Bristow. We are so glad you're with us. We're continuing on our series, but before we go any further, I wanna give you a couple of announcements. For our Bowie kids, we have started our Alive in Person. So we would love to have you be a part, talk to moms and dads and see if they'd be willing to bring you. You need to go online and register at cag.org slash events. Look for a live in person and we would love to see you there. Also, don't forget, we're still participating in BGMC, our missions challenge for this year. And all the money we are raising is going to help feed the India kids. So we, would, we just feel it's important that you guys be a part of that. If you're collecting your offerings or if you have allowance and you wanna give a portion, we, you can either do that by come, bringing it on our Friday night, alive in person, or give it to moms and dads and they can go online again at cag.org slash give, and they can give to BGMC right there. So we want you to be a part of sharing Jesus beyond just your family and beyond your community, but to the world around us, all right? So let's close our eyes and bow our heads and let's open our service with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to uh, be together and worship. Even though we may not be physically together, we are together in one spirit. And God, I pray that you would speak to all of us today. Lord, how we can um, just be more like you each and every day. So we give this service to you, ask that you challenge us and speak to our hearts. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's worship. Church, let's pick it up a little bit, come on.
joining us today. Please stand and continue worship. Yeah. Looks like we've got a gold one. That's pretty cool. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Welcome back on our series about the Sermon on the Mount. Now that was a sermon that Jesus taught on the side of a mountain to a huge crowd of people, which is pretty cool. Are you oh. rubbing that lamp hoping for a genie to pop out? <laughs> no, I'm just cleaning it. But that would be a cool thought. That would be really cool. Like imagine having three wishes that you could like wish for anything. That'd be so cool. What would you wish for? Um, probably like a lifetime supply of cotton candy. That'd be so good. Oh yeah, mm. I could go for that. How about you? Probably an endless amount of bagels. Oh, I love bagels so I much. Love them. So, so much. They're, They're really so good. good. But in all honesty, if we had those three wishes, something bad might happen if we got them. Like some really bad consequence would happen once we wish for them. You're right. Sometimes when we ask for stuff, we don't really think about everything that it could come with. Like with the cotton candy, say if I was eating cotton candy for like every meal of every day, maybe my teeth would fall out or I'd turn like purple or something because of <laughs> it being like that. Or I might grow a huge hole. Just like in my stomach. And you tell me, yep. like like the center of a yeah, like the center, center of a bagel. bagel. Yeah, <laughs> that's really awesome. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, talking about all this really reminds me about our um our lesson for today about um how sometimes we treat God like a genie where we just ask for things, but luckily God is amazing and He knows what's best for us. So He gives us things that sometimes aren't what we ask for, but it's what we need. You know? Yeah. So let's go into our Would You Rather game for today. The Would You Rather for today is Would You Rather Not Be Able to Speak or Hear? Hmm. I would rather not be able to hear. Yeah. What about you? Um, probably hear because I talk a lot, so yeah. I'd want to be able to speak. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? What would you be rather to do? Speak or hear? 
All right, guys, so now it's time to hear from our scripture, and that is found in Matthew 7, 7 through 11. Feel free to follow along in your Bibles. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you, for this sums up the law and the prophets. <laughs> All right, so today as we're talking about prayer, we're going to break down the segment where it's ask, seek, and knock. So I'm going to start, we're going to talk about ask. So you heard Miss Bethany and Miss Ryan talking about how cool it might be if we had three wishes and you could get whatever you want. Did you guys think about the three wishes or what you would ask for? I'm sure you guys were thinking along. Well, unfortunately, and actually I'm very thankful, God isn't like a genie in the bottle. But before we go into that a little bit deeper, we're gonna play a little game, okay? So I had each of my friends here write down their best gift ever that they've ever received, the best <laughs> gift they've ever received. And I'm going to draw it out and we're gonna try and guess who wrote whose gift, okay? okay? So I'm just gonna pick them randomly and we're gonna see who, who we have. So the first one is a beautiful camera. Hmm. Hmm. A beautiful camera. Hmm. Isaiah, who do you think wrote that? I feel like it's Bethany. I would say Bethany too. Ryan? Probably Bethany. Yeah. Is it you guys? <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, right. All right, all right, all right. Okay. So okay. the next one. We're gonna kind of kinda of, we'll get down to where we know who the last one yes. is. Yeah. Oh. This one might be a little bit more difficult to guess. An espresso machine. <laughs> That's Ryan. She's got a caffeine addiction, like oh wait, no, but you do too. Oh. But Miss Amy yeah, drinks coffee every saying, morning. She did too. She did this like. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. All right, Ryan. Who do you think? Are you gonna? And Bethany, who do you think? Who? You were kind of debating back and forth. Me, Ryan, I Miss Amy. It's either Ryan. Or I think I think, I think it's Ryan. I really Ryan do. or Miss Amy. I'm gonna go with Ryan. Who is they it? Both is it Ryan? It is. Ryan. <laughs> Let's go. I mean, like, Let's I would go. want one, but I don't have one. <laughs> Yes, she makes her own espresso That's in the morning. She's so. dangerous. So. All right, next one. Oh, now this one's interesting. The Nintendo Wii. That's definitely Miss Amy. 100. That, yeah, Amy. <laughs> Actually, I had one. I used one. Oh. That's oh, definitely. That it wasn't me. <laughs> definitely, okay. Or Pastor think? Sonia. One of you guys. Oh, I was definitely. thinking Miss Amy. <laughs> but now I don't know. But now I don't know. Sorry, I gave it away. <laughs> Is this you, Mr. Isaiah? No, it's, no, it's Bethany. No, it's what? Me. It's you. It's okay. You already guessed mine. You already guessed mine. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What was the best game? Yeah, what's the best game? Okay, uh, this is not an advertisement, but uh, Super <laughs> Smash Brothers. Yes. yes, absolutely. Does that have anything to do with the fact that you have brothers? Ooh. No, <laughs> no. definitely not. No. <laughs> you might have to get a confessional okay. session. <laughs> Ooh. A friend gave me ice cream for a year. Every month was a new flavor and it was delivered to my house. <laughs> There's a lot of This there. should be me. <laughs> That's you, Miss Amy. Yes, it was so nice. And it was a surprise. It was like the sweetest thing anybody ever gave Aww. to me. Literally That's because so it was ice cream. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It was good. Cool. I got wow. You. Okay. Got so you. I want you guys to think about what your best gift ever was. Think about that for just a second, okay? Okay, so that was pretty fun, finding out what everybody's favorite gift was, and I know, I hope you guys were thinking about what your favorite gift was. So, again, as we heard at the very beginning, Miss Ryan and Miss Bethany talking about God being a genie in a bottle, 
I'm so thankful God isn't a genie in a bottle. But what we do know is that God does hear us when we ask. When we take time and, and spend time in prayer and we're asking, he is listening. And so I want to take and look up another passage of scripture that helps to explain that a little bit better, okay? If you go in your Bibles to Numbers chapter 6, verse 25 and 26, it says in Numbers 6, verse 25 and 26, the Lord makes his face shine on you and he, and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So how many of you, when you're trying to get your parents' attention, you know that they may be listening, but you know they're listening when they actually look at you, when they turn their face toward you. Well, that scripture is really given a good illustration that when we pray, it's as if God is turning his face towards you. He's paying attention. He's listening. When he turns his face towards you, he really is paying attention. And that's what's most important. We have to be so thankful that he just doesn't snap his fingers and give us everything we ask for. Because what we ask for may not be what's best for us. But what we can be thankful for and what is most important is that he is watching or he is paying attention, he's listening, and he is hearing our prayers. So that's more important than just that snap of the finger, whatever I want, I get. Because again, it may not be what's best for you. He knows what's best for you. So the second part of that scripture says, seek and you will find. So obviously that must mean like hide and seek. So I thought it'd be really fun if we played a game. I'm going to put a picture up and I want you to look for something in the pictures. I've got three of them. You ready? Okay. Let's okay. Go. So the first picture is going to be of watermelons and inside somewhere is a snake hidden. And I'm going to give you 30 seconds to find it. You try to find it too at home. Okay. You ready? Okay. Go. Okay. Looking at that, where's the snake? Uh, I can't. Is it like a, a, is it a what kind of snake? snake? Is no, it cobra? No, it's not a pink snake. That's a good question. Is it okay. a cobra? The I don't know. Pink. I didn't ask him. Is it like straight line snake or is like a Maybe it's squiggly, curvy? like with the squiggles of the watermelon. Oh. Maybe. That's a good. Is that it? Where? No. Uh, Ooh, top corner. On the screen. No, it's not oh. in the top corner. Okay. Are you, you give up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You ready? Go ahead and put the picture up that has the snake. Did you see it? It's right there down at the oh. bottom. Oh. Yeah. It okay. was hidden. It was a little sneaky. Yeah, that, that's okay, where so it is. Okay, so I have to look I, harder. I knew, I knew yeah. that. Okay. I knew that. I knew All right, that. so we're going to do our second picture. Are you ready for this? All right, You're let's looking do it. for a mushroom in the midst of jellyfish. Oh, this one's easy. Okay. You ready? I love that she said that because it's not. Go. 30 oh, seconds. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is All right. not um, as simple as I thought. Um, yes. Is the mushroom going to look like a jellyfish? Well, you would assume so. Well, it's hidden in, well, in the jellyfish. Well, how do we know if it's jellyfish. a mushroom then? Oh my goodness. Really? Okay, look. Do you want some hints? Is it a different color? <sighs> Isaiah. Okay, so I'll give you a hint. The jellyfish have squiggly lines, but a, a Oh, mushroom. right there! Right yes. there, right there! You see it? Yep, good right for there. you. You ready? That's okay, go not ahead it. And, it yes. is it. Yes, it was. Go ahead and look. See? See, it has no squiggly see, lines. I told you. You didn't see that. I you did saw see something it. else. Okay. Mm -hmm. I probably saw that one. All right, anyway. You probably saw oh, I thought okay. it was a jellyfish. Okay, last one. But I found it. All last right. one. You ready? This is a picture of a bunch of hamsters, and inside somewhere is a potato or a okay. potato. You ready? Potato. It's a potato. Okay, go. 30 seconds. Is it a hamster eating a potato? Uh, I'm no. just going to go through every okay. line and try to Every look. line. Good for you. That's a good way. So obviously the is potato it is brown. Is well, a french fry or is it a potato like Are you kidding? French fry is technically a potato. Are you kidding yeah. me? It's a potato. Well, okay. okay, it's got okay. the skin I'm on just it and everything. Okay, I'm making sure I'm looking for well, the right thing. Do All right. Have the skin oh my on goodness, them. look for the potato. I'm saying it's on the screen, right? Yes. Are you it's sure? On the screen. Are you, maybe it's like behind oh. the screen. Okay. It's I not give there. Up. Oh, it's I'm just going to give it to you. Here, this is what it looks like. Uh, that's not a potato. That's not a potato. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine, I agree. Okay, there. in this picture, it's a potato. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Some yeah. potatoes look different. I guess they look like hamsters these days. Okay. So. Right. so, obviously, seeking and finding with this scripture means so much more. It's not about playing a game, right? It's about getting closer to God. And sometimes when we pray, sometimes we don't really spend that time that we need to when we pray. Like, okay, how about this prayer? You know? Dear God, bless my mom, bless my dad, bless the spaghetti I had in my stomach. Amen. 
right? I mean, it's a prayer, and God wants you to pray. I mean, it's not going to be angry that you're praying at him. But you could do so much better. You could go deeper with God if you really were seeking and looking for him. So I want to um, share this scripture. It's in Jeremiah 29, 12 through 14. I've got to put my glasses on. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me, and you will seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Hmm. So you want to seek God with all of your heart. It isn't something that you do superficially, right? We're just like, hey, God, how you doing? All right, I'm going to bed now. He wants you to be really invested. He wants you to be purposeful with seeking him. He wants you to put your all into it, your heart into it. And when you seek God and purposely go after him, whether you're looking through scriptures, whether you're in prayer, then you will, be, you will find God because he wants you to know him. But it isn't something that somebody else can do for you. It's going to be a decision on your part. You have to decide to know God, decide to go after him and to know him. So you're going to have to look for him. It's going to take some effort on your part, but that's the way God wants us to do, to look for him, and then he will be found. Hmm. Okay. All right, so now we're going to talk about the last part of the verse, which is knocking. So we're going to play a little game. I have my uh, friends here. So what they're going to do, they're going to do a signature knock that they're only going to do on this door right here, and you're going to see them, and then they're going to walk backstage, and then... Without us knowing, we're going to hear some knocks, and they're going to come back out, and we have to guess whose knock it matches. We have to remember which that knock was. So, uh, Ryan, why don't you go first? Do your knock. All right, you can go ahead backstage. We got to make sure we remember that. All right, Pastor Sonia. Okay, thank you. Miss Amy. All right, and Bethany. All right, cool. All right, let's close the door. All right, you all Mac, mix yourselves up back there. All right. Now, one at a time, let, they'll come back, and let's see if we can guess who's who. Go ahead. All right, who do you guys think that is? Let's find out. All right, it's Pastor Sonia. All right, cool. All right, let's do the next one. I wonder who it will be. Hmm, that one definitely sounds familiar. Um, let's see, see, tell me if you guys know who it is. Let's see. It's Miss Amy, I think I didn't remember that one. All right, let's have the next one. Oh, I definitely remember that one. That one, I think, was the last one we had. It is Miss Bethany. All right, we have one more. I think this will be the hardest one, guys. We just have to remember who the person was. Ah, I don't know if we want this person in the house. All right, let's see. Oh, hey, and it's Miss Ryan. <laughs> All right, that was pretty fun. All right, so let's now talk about that last part of the Bible verse where it says, knock and the door will be opened. So when is it when we usually knock on a door? You probably think when you're maybe at your friend's house, you're going over to somebody else's house and you knock on the door and you want them to open it to you, right? You want to come inside and see that person. Well, when we're knocking in our prayers, it's not necessarily that we're asking for specific things like we talked about before, but we are asking God, hey, I want to talk to you. I want to spend time with you. Kind of knocking on that door like with your friend or family member. You want to come inside and see them. You want to come inside into God's presence and just spend time with him. That's why he loves it when we knock on the door. It's a representation of saying, hey, I want to spend time with you, God. I want to come into your presence. So I'm going to read a Bible verse that talks about why it's so important for us to not just ask for things in prayer, but also just spend time um, talking with God and listening and what that does for us. This Bible verse is from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and verse 18. Here's what it says. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. So all of us who have had that veil removed and can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord makes us more and more like him 
as we are changed into his glorious image. So when we spend time in God's presence, he does an amazing thing. Not only are we, um, we experience that peace because we're with him and we get to learn more about him and we get to pray and ask for things, but he also changes our hearts. He makes us more like him. Those uh, selfish or maybe angry thoughts that we may feel sometimes, maybe before we pray, spending time in his presence can take those uh, bad feelings away and maybe those bad thoughts or maybe those bad attitudes we had before. But he can make us have his peace and his love and his kindness when we spend time with him. Okay, so we've been learning how when we pray, God wants us to ask, seek, and knock. So let's do a cool experiment to help us to think about that in a different way. I'm, I have a balloon, just a regular balloon, and we're gonna say that this is God, okay? And this is a little vase, and this is going to be you. So let me show you what happens when you pray. So I'm going to say that this match is like when you pray. I'm gonna, so I'm going to put the match inside of the vase, and then I'm gonna put the balloon on top. And that's like when you pray, God draws close to you. Now, if you can look closely, you can see that the balloon is being drawn inside of the vase. Now this happens because the fire was burning up the oxygen and creating a vacuum inside of the vase and it draws the balloon inside. But that helps us to think about prayer because when you pray, you are drawn closer to God. So let me show you now because of the vacuum, I can pick up this balloon and it's stuck. The vase is stuck to it. So that's just like when you are drawn close to God, you get to know him better. You are drawn to the things that he wants you to be. So whenever you're praying for God's will for your life, you, you, when you get to know God better, then when he moves, you move. So when you pray then, and you, God has drawn you close to him, when you pray for his will for your life, then you want to do the things that God wants you to do. You will put aside the things that maybe are selfish or the, your own way, and instead you want God's way. And so that is just like seeking him and knocking on his door. He draws you into his presence and he helps you to know what he wants you to do and he'll help you to do it. The Bible is filled with people who called out to God in prayer. God heard their prayers and answered. The prophet Elijah met a group of priests for the false prophet Baal for a showdown on top of Mount Carmel. The prophets of Baal prayed all day, but there was no response. Elijah prepared a sacrifice to God. Then he prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord. Answer me so these people will know that you, Lord, are God, and that you are turning their hearts back again. God answered by sending a fire to burn up the sacrifice and the wood, and even the stone altar and the soil around it. When everyone saw what happened, they fell to the ground and cried, the Lord is God. Nehemiah was the cupbearer for the Persian king Artaxerxes. He heard news that Jerusalem was in great danger because the walls of the city were in ruins. Nehemiah prayed, Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant. I'm praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. Then Nehemiah requested to be sent to Jerusalem to rebuild the wall, and he asked for all the supplies he needed. The king Artaxerxes said yes, 
and also sent soldiers to protect Nehemiah. God helped Nehemiah and the people of Jerusalem to rebuild the wall around the city in only 52 days. Daniel was known by everyone as a man who prayed to the one true God. Men who didn't like him tried to use this to get Daniel killed. They went to King Darius and tricked him into making a rule that no one could pray to anyone except the king. Daniel immediately went home and prayed in front of the open window, just like he always did. This caused Daniel to be thrown into a den of lions. But God heard Daniel's prayer. He sent an angel to guard Daniel. This miracle caused King Darius to send a message throughout his entire empire that the God of Daniel should be feared and honored. When God caused the Red Sea to part and the Israelites to walk through on dry land, they were overwhelmed with thankfulness to God. Moses and Miriam led the entire nation in a song of praise to God for answering their prayers. They sang, The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. They remembered to be thankful for the things God did for them. After Jesus took the Last Supper with his disciples, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. He said, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken away from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. And then he said, My Father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. Jesus asked God for help. He looked for God's will. Then he found God's heart. God answered Jesus' prayer with no. It was God's will for Jesus to go to the cross to be sacrificed for the sin of all people. So we have learned from our Bible story about many different people who sought God out in prayer. They sought him out in different situations that they needed help with. And they asked God and they um, seeked him so they could find him. And God ultimately revealed himself to them in a powerful way. So we're going to do that right now during this time of prayer. We're going to go through uh, five different points of prayer. And I want you guys to pray with me for those things. So the first one is we're going to remember Elijah and how he prayed for the people to around him to know the one true God. So let's pray for those in our lives who we want to know, um, who we want God to reveal himself to, and we want those people to know him. Dear Jesus, I thank you, God. I thank you and praise you that you are awesome and powerful, God, Lord. I thank you for the example of Elijah and how he boldly stood up for uh, his faith and what he believed in. God, I pray for those in our lives who we want um, to have a relationship with you, Jesus. I pray that you would help us to be a light and a witness to them. I pray that uh, you would reveal yourself to them and that they would open their hearts uh, to receive you in your presence, God. I pray that you would uh, use us in a powerful way. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So next, we're going to uh, remember the example of Nehemiah in the Bible and how he had um, to stand up and uh, be bold to pray and ask God for, um, to request, to give the request of the king, but also to um, do the, ask God to do the impossible and help him and his team build, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. We're going to ask God and pray over those situations in our lives that we feel are impossible and ask him for help. Dear God, I thank you that you are the God of the impossible. There's nothing too difficult for you. And we remember the example from Nehemiah of how you gave him the boldness to not only ask the king, but also to trust you to do impossible things, God. We know there are difficult situations in our lives, and we need you to come through and make a breakthrough in a powerful way, God. We believe that you are, um, are bigger than everything else, and we will trust you to um, make a breakthrough for us, God, and move in a powerful way. I pray that you would provide for uh, families that need provisions, God, and you would help us to, um, 
just see what you're doing in every situation, God, and trust you even when we don't know what you're doing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So next we'll remember Daniel. And um, Daniel had an awesome relationship with God because he consistently prayed. So we're going to pray that God would help us to have a relationship with him by seeking him out in prayer. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you that you want to have a personal relationship with us, God. I thank you that you allow us to uh, come into your presence and to seek you in prayer. I pray that we remember the example of Daniel and how three times a day he would uh, habitually pray. And um, it didn't matter what other people thought of him, but he would uh, seek you out in prayer even when uh, difficult things happened and when he could have been scared, when um, he was thrown into the lion's den or when he was... Um, People wanted to get rid, of, uh, get rid of him, but God, because he knew who you are and because he had a relationship with you, he um, was bold and um, continued to seek you out in prayer. I pray that you would help us to do the same thing, God, and even when we are scared or fearful, we would come to you first and ask you to comfort us, comfort us and give us strength. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So next we remember Moses and Miriam and how they sang uh, praise and worship to God. So when we pray, that is also the time to thank God for the awesome things that he's done and to remember that he is faithful and that he does awesome things for us. So let's right now just praise him in our prayer. Dear God, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you that you are so awesome and amazing. You always come through for us, God. You're faithful and uh, so wonderful, God. I thank you that you are amazing and that you love us and you care for us. Um, I don't want to ask you for anything, God. I just want to thank you for the things that you've given us already, Lord. I pray that you would help the, the kids to remember those things that you've given us, and we would just be thankful in our hearts for the things that you do for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So the last part is um, remembering Jesus' example when he was in the garden and how um, even though God, uh, Jesus was asking if, you know, there's another way that they could do this, where he didn't have to suffer on the cross. Ultimately, we knew God's, uh, the Father's answer was no. He wanted Jesus to go to the cross. Jesus was still submissive to his will. He um, wanted God's will above anything else to be done. No matter what his answer was, he knew he wanted God's will to be done. So we're going to pray that even though we have things that we ask for, even when God says no, we want to be um, seeking his will above everything else. So let's pray. Dear God, I thank you, Lord, that your will is perfect. Even though um, you say no to us, God, and there's things that we're asking for, and maybe we don't always get an answer immediately, and maybe there's other times where that's, you tell us that's not your will for us, God, but we can still be thankful and joyful that you, your will for us is perfect and amazing, God. Your plans for us are better than anything else we can imagine, God. I pray that we remember the example of Jesus and how he was always following the will of his Father, God. And I pray that we would do the same thing, even when we don't understand what's going on. Maybe we're in a, a place that we don't like or we feel uncomfortable. We'll uh, always trust that your will is the best thing for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So thank you guys for praying with us uh, this day. I also want to challenge you guys to find some time this week. It can be in the morning or the afternoon, but find a space of time, just like Daniel did, to focus on prayer uh, to God. It can be any one of these points that we talked about, but also we want to make sure we're praising God and just keep spending time in his presence, like we talked about earlier, just knocking on his door and asking God, hey, I want to just spend time with you right now. Even if it's not just asking him for things, but just trying to build that relationship with him. So that's my challenge to you. To find some time this week, just set aside that time, um, maybe two to five minutes, and just spend time in God's presence. Thanks for being with us. I hope that you accepted Mr. Isaiah's challenge. I know I'm going to challenge myself to increase my prayer time every day because we want to be spending time with the Lord and growing in our walk with Him. So don't forget to register to be a part of Alive in Person. For those of you here in Bowie, we would love to see you. We're having a great time uh, worshiping and fellowshipping and growing and learning together. So you want to make sure and be a part of that, all right? 
If I don't see you Friday, we will see you next week online. Bye.